Sarah Jacqueline with The Fable Tree here. This week, we are getting festive, and I encourage you to play around with different boho arch shapes, partial shapes, arches, whatever you want, um, and just kind of move them around together until you find an, a configuration that works for you. So we're going to start with that basic boho arch shape uh, for the first part of my sign. And I'm going to do a four inch by four inch ellipse, which is of course just a circle. <laughs> and then I'm going to uh, click the selection tool, move it up and out of the way because I wanna add a square underneath it. So click and hold, select your rectangle tool, click wherever, and we will do a four inch by four inch rectangle also known as a square. <laughs> and we just want to move it up to where it is right at that center line of the circle. And if you're not sure if you're there, you can hover over your circle and just look for this, um, here, let's click it. Look for this dot if you click it um, or that little X that was hovering right there. Okay, so this is nice. I'm going to go ahead and select both of those. Come over to my Pathfinder Finder panel and click to unite. If you don't have that Pathfinder panel, it's up window Pathfinder and you'll get all of your Pathfinder options, but you just want that one that says unite. Whew. Okay, now I know already that I'm going to be using a Marigold, Med the Mar Marigold Meadows Pastel Bold Acrylic from Cerulean Tides. So I want to go ahead and just change the color, not to that, <laughs> but uh, we'll start with that and then get it kind of somewhere closer. There we go. I just like to visualize things with the proper materials before I, you know, cut things out of materials in case I end up not liking it as much as I wanted to. Okay, so now you can cut or I'm sorry, copy and paste on a Mac, that's Command C, Command V. On a PC, it's Control C, Control V, or of course, edit. All right, and I'm not going to do just a second um, boho arch, although you certainly could. I'm going to first come in and pick my color, and this is actually not what I meant to do. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna double click on this so that it pulls up the color picker. I'm gonna change it to a little pinkier because my other, uh, acrylic option is actually a um, it's the papaya pastel acrylic from uh, Cerulean Tides. So this is these are not exact color matches here. <laughs> I'm not t terribly concerned about that, um, but I just wanted something to be uh, close enough that I can visualize. Now I'm going to move booch it up a little bit and shift click and drag and I shift click and drag so that I preserve the proportions. OK, you can also change your proportions over here and just make sure that, that I'm sorry your measurements over here and just make sure that the link is clicked so that it maintains those proportions. Now, I actually want just a partial um, uh, a partial arch for the this piece, which is going to kind of go tucked behind. In fact, that's pretty big. Let's scooch down. OK, um, it's going to be tucked behind my key piece here. OK, so I'm going to get a, a rectangle shape and it kind of snaps it to that that center line. OK, but if it doesn't, you can just leave that and again, hover over and see where your center dot comes up. In this case, you can look at this one. And yes, it's centered over there. So perfect. And go ahead and select both. Uh, come to the Pathfinder panel and this time you'll use the minus front button. OK, so maybe you like this shape as it is. Let's put it here and just object, arrange, send backwards, because in mine, it's going to be behind. And you can kind of move it over, see what you like. And I actually think it needs a little extra put back, but not in, I don't want it to curve around the whole time. So I'm just going to take this and just add a little rectangle here. You want to be really careful about your measurements so you don't have a jut or a, like a shift when you um, combine. So make sure that you zoom in and make sure that everything looks nice and smooth. And it does. So I will select both Pathfinder Unite. And I like that shape pretty well. And now it has moved this back to the front. So object, arrange, send backwards, scooch it over, make sure it's what you like. Again, I am nestling mine one behind the other. You can, you don't have to. Now here's where it gets even more exciting. I'm going to first zoom in here. We're going to do a couple of things with wording. Uh, first, I'm going to cut out some letters that say Happy Friendsgiving here. Um, and I'll just glue. Well, I'll use 3M. I don't glue. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use uh, some peach, past, uh, peach pastel acrylic from Cerulean Tides here and uh, 3M and just glue Happy Friendsgiving. So we'll put those words there, score some placement lines. But here we're going to do something a little bit different, something I haven't shown you before on this channel. So 
uh, we're going to add some lettering right around here merged with this piece. So let me just copy paste this same shape. And we are going to click and hold this type on a path tool. And you can click wherever and it's going to look ridiculous and nobody would want something that looked just like that, right? <laughs> but we're going to hopefully trust me. Come to Glamour Absolute or whatever font you like. I love Glamour Absolute for Boho Designs. It's got a ton of gorgeous glyphs, as we'll see in a minute when we work on our Happy Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving text. But for now, let's put it at maybe a 60 or something like that. And I'm going to say, hmm, what do I want my sign to say? Let's say, uh oh, why are we not typing? Drink up. And then actually, I do want to open up these glyphs. Let's see, come up to type glyphs and it pulls up all the fun bonuses that you've got. Okay, and I'm gonna use this D because I think that's cuter. And then I'm also, so that I don't have to uh, worry about merging this little I dot because sometimes that can look awkward. I'm gonna come down and use this merged um, RI um, glyph. And I'm also going to use this K because I think it's prettier. <laughs> There aren't really any glyphs for U and P, so easy enough to decide there. Okay. Now, when you have your text the way you want it, and know it's not in the right spot, but the letters themselves are how you want them, the right size, uh, the right glyphs, come up to your selection tool. And now you see all these lines show up, and they all do interesting things. Okay. Um, so you can, if you want, experiment, pull things around. I, uh oh, here we go. I'm gonna just drag this one up here because I want it on the arch. And I'm gonna move this one further back so that I have more room to play with here. Okay, and we are going to, let's see here. Just kind of mess with this until you like the shape of it. Remember, it's gonna be merged with that. So you'll want a little slight overlap and uh, we will also kind of tweak things once we get it over to that. So once you think you've got things pretty much how you like it, you can go ahead and right click and create your outlines. And since we do have some slight overlaps here, you may want to go ahead and Pathfinder Unite. I'm not going to do that yet because I think I might rotate some things and I don't want it to cause trouble. So bring this on over to your arch shape and we're going to zoom in so we can really kind of get um, kind of get into it. We want just a smidgiest bit of overlap here so that each letter connects to the um, connects to this boho arch when we go to Pathfinder Unite later. But you'll see that here it's kind of a strange angle and here we have more overlapping and I don't love it. So I'm going to go ahead object ungroup to break all these apart except this one of course um, and I think that's okay because we're just going to rotate it slightly. Not confident that did much. I need to zoom in a little further. And what that does is it lets you adjust things um, in slightly smaller in increments. So get what you're comfortable with. There we go. Um, and if I was really worried about this, I could even um, use the direct select tool and select just my eye. And you just kind of have to piece it together with your shift and your selections. But I'm not that worried about it. So at this one, I'm going to just kind of switch a little bit. This one is not all right with me at all. So I'm going to move it over a good bit. I want some space. I don't want these two to be the same letter. letter. And then I'm going to move this one down just a smidge, too, to do the same thing. And uh, I don't like this little sticking up. So we're going to just rotate that a bit. Now, again, you don't have to be this um, intense about it. <laughs> Uh, just, uh -oh. just adjust it in a way that makes sense to you. And once you're done messing around with it, be done messing around with it. And that's fine. Okay. And I say that and can't take my own advice. All right. <laughs> now here, I really want this to look like a P and not just like a random thing. So I'm going to move it up a little bit just so that people can see that there's a stem and hopefully it will look visually pleasing once we merge it all together. All right. Now, when you are ready and you say, you know what, this looks lovely, I'm going to keep it just like this. Click one of the letters, come up to select same fill color, and that'll select everything that's black. And that just, you know, that's just so you don't have to click each letter individually. Pathfinder Unite so that it's all treated as one unit now. And then, you know what, before I do this, so I was going to Pathfinder Unite, but that would turn that black. And I really want to keep this nice 
pastel color. So I'm just going to draw a random square. Use my eyedropper because that was a uh -oh. use my eyedropper tool. And this is a custom color. So I just want to I just want to hang on to that. You don't have to do that at all. OK, it's up to you. And now you can come over Pathfinder Unite and then use your eyedropper again to come back to that original color and get rid of that. OK, so this is the time to assess whether you like how this united. I think it looks really cute. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, so that part is done as far as I'm concerned. Object arrange, send to back or send backward. And that part is good to go. I don't need any other text on this. I don't need any other designs on this. Its job is to say drink up and that's it. OK, now I'm going to work on my happy friends giving text. And here we want the type tool, but we don't want type on a path. We just want type. OK, and I am going to use um, Glamour Absolute for this as well and come on in and take a look at our glyphs. I think for this one, I'm just going to use an H glyph. We're going to adjust the size shortly, so don't worry about the font size here not fitting. And then Friendsgiving, we're going to do a lot of glyph work here. So if you are using a different um, font or you don't care about the, the glyphs or something like that, no worries. You can just skip ahead. Um, but I love that it's got this F this ri and this gi so i don't have to worry about all these i dots i like that it merges and looks beautiful that way so all of my i glyphs are being used i'm also going to come and do this and what this one there's so many good options it's just um it's hard to resist going overboard with glyphs sometimes so okay so i'm happy with that you can of course play around until you're perfectly happy um, and then I recommend that you create outlines for each of your words separately so that you can then align them perfectly. OK, and I like to use this align tool, horizontal align center, and it scooched it just a little bit because I am not that great at um, visualizing. OK, if you don't have this panel for some reason, object align and you can do horizontal align center that way. I am going to scooch this down just a bit, I think. And then I will go ahead and Pathfinder unite this so that it's all one unit and shift, uh oh, shift, click and drag to make it smaller because I want Friendsgiving to fit really nicely. Now, if you are doing uh, a menu, you could put Happy Friendsgiving up here. And in fact, it would be kind of cute. I'm using the frosty side, but if I were using the, the shiny side, I could leave this alone and use a chalk pen or use uh, vinyl that would be removed later or all sorts of things to put the actual drink menu underneath. OK, so you could do that. You could move it here just so that it's a decoration um, that just is happy for Thanksgiving. And then you could use that again next year. OK, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this option. So I'm going to click these two and go ahead and horizontal align center. And it just moved it a little bit and make sure that you still like it in relation to this over here in honor of me <laughs> wanting to keep my visualization going. I'm going to go ahead. I, don't know, I keep clicking it too many times. Go ahead and put my peach acry acrylic color here. It's going to be something like, I don't know. I feel like sometimes I spend too much time trying to get that perfect. And now you can get a, a preview of what it will look like. Now, of course, you're not going to send the file just like this to the Glowforge because it won't work. It will just try to engrave a whole bunch of stuff and it'll be a big sloppy mess. So instead, what you want to do at this point is decide on your size. For me, I'm going to make it as large as it can be so uh, uh, and still be this direction. I don't want it to be giant um, and use up my whole sheet of expensive but beautiful acrylic. So I'm going to just use I'm going to use this part. And let's see, that's what um, I want to see how big this piece is. Ten and a half inches. I'm actually going to resize that down a smidge. I'm super comfortable when it's closer to 10 inches. And that's fine with me. Um, and then this one is going to go in its own little sheet of acrylic uh, and it's going to be rotated. So let's go object, transform, rotate. 90 degrees. OK, or you could have done that over here as well. Um, and let's see here. I don't know why I'm trying to fit that here. It's going to go on its own color. So file new. Paste it in. Go ahead and swap the fill and the stroke. 
okay? Because you need to send a stroke to the Glowforge if you want to be cutting, which is what I want to do, okay? So this one's ready to go to the Glowforge. Um, this one is not yet. <laughs> we're going to leave this one here and go ahead and swap that fill in stroke. And we're going to copy and paste these words over here. That's going to go on yet another sheet. But I want to use this to score some placement lines. So we're going to come object path offset path. And actually, that looks great. So negative 0.04 is the offset path I'm using right here. Before I click off or do anything right now, I'm going to go ahead and change this to my green color that I usually use to indicate a, a, um, a score. And then swap that fill and stroke so it's empty. Uh, I'm sorry, an empty fill. And then Command C to copy it or Control C on a PC and then delete it and then delete that too. All right. Then edit, paste in place, and it'll just bring back my score lines. OK, now this, again, is just so I don't have to eyeball it when I'm trying to put it together because it would be a crooked, terrible mess. Um, I tend to use black cut lines. OK, so I'm going to leave that there. That can go away. And then this is going to go on its own sheet because it's being cut from a third color of acrylic. All right. And so swap that fill in stroke, change your stroke color to black or whatever you feel like. And um, I'm going to zoom in here just to see if I need to move anything around. So object ungroup because I see that my H is a little close to my A, um, which might be fine for wood. But I find that I like a little extra space between letters when I'm cutting acrylic so that if there's any melting or any strangeness that happens, um, which can sometimes happen, uh, that it doesn't impact things too much. Hmm, this is probably fine. I wanted to to really zoom in here and make sure that this wasn't going to cut right there because that would be awkward. Um, okay, and if you're worried about any of these very thin parts, you can add an offset of like a 0.002 or something like that. Just experiment with it and see what feels right. Um, and that will accommodate for the acrylic that's going to be melted away by the laser when you're cutting, okay? So whenever you're confident that everything is nice and uh, spaced out appropriately, and in fact, there's no reason to lose all of this space, you can scooch things down and not that far and um, just maximize your space however you're happy with. Then you'll go ahead and save each of your documents. Let's see here, Friendsgiving sign words, wording. I always save it as Illustrator so I can easily edit later. And then come back and save as SVG, save. Make sure that you're using SVG 1.0. Make sure that responsiveness is turned off so it doesn't resize in the Glowforge interface. Save each of your documents this way, and you're ready to go. Now, here's the thing. I am uh, going to then add some uh, slotted stands for these. That's a little beyond the scope of this YouTube channel, but I do cover it in my course, FileMakers Academy. So if you want to take a deep dive into slots and stands and kerf and all of the sort of complicated things to pay attention to there, uh, check out FileMakers Academy. I'll make sure to link it in the description here. But if you haven't heard of, about it before, it's my five week file design course. We start at super simple files. In fact, we start by setting up your Illustrator workspace for success and then dive into super simple files and then take it up a level and up another level and up another level until you're a pro. OK, um, so again, you can check out the link in the description and I hope to see you there. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything I can help you with, leave it in the comments and I will check in with you soon. Have a good one.